Hey guys, Chris Murphy here, not done a video in a long time and I'm back again and I want to do some great videos for you guys. Starting today I want to talk about dopamine, um, the feel-good chemical that's in your brain that we become addicted to uh, in this sort of technology age. Uh, we're we'll more focusing today on this little gadget here which is your phone and just some great tips on how reducing your screen time can lead you to living a lot more productive life, get a lot more things done, stop procrastinating, become a lot happier, a lot more fulfilled stop craving the addiction, just, just be comfortable in yourself without needing this feel-good chemical. Um, and finally, just living a lot more fulfilled life. Like I've, I've done retreats where I've been away for a weekend, been away for a week, been away for a month without a phone. Um, and I found it great. I found it great not being on social media, not constantly thinking who's texting me, um, and just, just realizing that it's, it's not really needed. You know, we, we've survived for so many years with before this technology and probably in our own life as well when we were kids. So it can give you a lot of freedom. So I wanna share those great tips with you today and, and how to best help you out with that. So the overall point of this as well is to get you out of your head, to get you more centered in your body and to just to, to know what, what works and what doesn't. And it's about testing. So with a lot of these tips, if you just test them and you could be waiting for your friend, you could be out on a social event and you just don't check your phone at all and you feel very peaceful, you feel very certain focused um, and you just, you just feel a lot better in general. So the first tip is to not check your phone first thing in the morning. Now I know when you wake up, you may be striving just to, you're not feeling in a good place and you want to just feel good straight away. Um, but as I've tried and tested so many times, that feel good chemical straight away to check your phone, check your messages, emails, social media can maybe feel, make you feel good straight away, but then it sort of flattens you out for the rest of the day. So a good tip is to keep your phone in airplane mode. Um, and if you, you strive and you say you have a practice like you do in yoga or you do meditation or you, you read or you write some things down, um, you do some exercise first thing in the morning, it's more likely that you're going to feel better after that than if you just sort of wake up, check your phone. And it will lead to a longer process throughout the day of you just constantly checking your phone again and again. But if you left your phone to say you wake up at seven and you don't check it till about nine, ten o'clock, then you're less likely to check your phone all the time. And what you'll normally find is people, it's never really that urgent first thing in the morning. You know, who's really text you over the night, um, needs you to check something straight away. Of course, there might be something work related you might need to check, but if you can, do keep it in airplane mode. And um, so how do you get, and, and what you wanna do as well is to try and avoid looking at your phone completely, even in the morning. So how can you get around this? Well, you can get an alarm clock. I do have an alarm clock, um, which is digital alarm clock and it just goes off. And there's something great without having to actually check your phone, then you can use the clocks in, in the room or you can use the watch as well. So you just want to avoid looking at your phone because even just looking at the phone can make you more likely to, to look into your messages, to check your photos, social media, all these things. So keeping it in, in airplane mode just is more likely that you're just not gonna check it as well. Okay, so the second tip is to disable all the notifications on your phone. So anything that sort of springs up on your phone saying you've got this notification, you've got a Facebook uh, shared post, you've got this, you've got that, um, you know, you've got a Tinder match, whatever comes up, is it's more likely then to drag you out. And I think this is what I found, particularly with WhatsApp notifications or messages, um, is best to avoid as well, because the second you see that, you're more likely to go into it. Um, and then if you can just agree to check your phone at a set time, so let's just say you check, you know, every hour or so, then you've got all your messages. You know, messages are never really that urgent. I think if it's very urgent, people will phone you. Of course, it could, it could be urgent, um, but you just have to take that chance. Um, and that's the reason a lot of people are like, well, what if it's urgent? And test it, you know, if your job, you might not be able to do notifications for certain things, but for a lot of things, just test it, you know, because social media in particular, a recent documentary talk called The Social Dilemma talks about how Facebook's algorithm is designed to just keep you so addictive that you just want to keep checking it. Third one is that you want to stop scrolling through news feeds. So this involves Facebook has always been the main one, but now you find it's on Instagram, it's on YouTube. Um, again, they kind of know what, what you like and it's designed to keep you addictive. But what's been proven with Facebook, for example, when you're scrolling through the news feed, you're seeing so many different things, you like to feel a lot of different emotions very quickly, things are just quickly flashing in your mind. We've never really had this kind of technology that's existed before. So it's normally in Facebook, it's kind of allowing you can be, you can be quite judgmental, it depends on 
just be aware of how you feel about scrolling through the feed, what's going on in your mind, um, because all these things are really important. And scrolling through the feed, it can just maybe leave you feeling quite drained. So you want to avoid this. And, and it, you know, of course, you could probably do it once or twice a day, maybe as a treat. Um, but if you're just constantly, you pick up your phone and you're scrolling through it, a lot of these things we actually do unconsciously. Um, and again, they're an escape. So you might be feeling a bit of boredom or discomfort. And it's always worth staying with that um, because you know that, that can tell you a lot about what, what you're feeling right now and what you're, you can likely come to a resolution from that. If you're feeling quite bored, you maybe just realize that your life is quite boring at the moment or that you, you want to engage yourself in something more addictive. But you could just be sat down and because you've got that, you're feeling good. But then at the end, you feel quite empty because you've not really done anything productive in your day. So be aware of the newsfeed and, and how it affects you and, and question like why are you actually doing it. The fourth one is an evening cut off. So really allow yourself to draw a line of when you go to bed. So for example, like I go to bed at 11, but I make sure I turn my phone off at 10 or I aim to at least turn it off at 10. So find the time you can commit to and then just put it into airplane mode. Sort of say like, that's it. I'm done for the day. Um, there's no more messages I need because I think if you're looking at messages and you're going through social media just before you go to bed, it can mean that you're just in your mind a lot and you can find it hard to sleep. So really allow yourself just to literally say like, look, this is it, airplane mode, and just give your, yourself a break from screens. You know, an evening routine is great. Allow yourself to journal, allow yourself to reflect, do a bit of reading, physical books would be great. Um, just to, to really bring yourself into the moment. Okay, so the fifth one is to check your phone at certain times. So normally what we'll keep doing is maybe checking our phone, see whose message was back. Of course, if you're waiting on an urgent response, that's valid. But if you're throughout your every day and you're just thinking, look, I don't really need to check my phone. I'm not really urgently expecting anything. Just, just check your phone um, like every hour or two. You know, if you can about three or four times a day, five times a day, I mean, that, that's perfect. Um, and then just check your messages. What we're craving actually is a big dopamine rush. So the second we get that message, that email, we see the notification and you know we have this dopamine. It's, it's exciting to find out whose message does, what's the email about. But equally, if you do it at a certain time, you're likely to still get probably an even bigger dopamine rush because then you'll see like seven or eight people have texted you instead of maybe one or two people like every time you're checking it every five, 10 minutes. So you know, if you can separate into, uh, and then you'll just notice, like with all of these points, guys, just test them because then you'll actually realize, look, it's not really that urgent. I, does it really matter if I respond to this? And, and if you can do stuff like this, you can journal and reflect and say, look, I realize that I don't really need to check it. You know, maybe there's certain relationships you've got with people where you, you, you might have to attend a bit more. And also other people might just respond straight away, but that's, that's their life. It depends on what you want. If you really got a lot of goals to do, you want to just be a lot more free from the phone. And also just to experiment, see if this works. It might not, you might just want to check it all the time and that's fine. But I found this works great. And, um, and it just, just makes things a lot easier um, because every time you're checking the phone, you can, you can just get sidetracked. You know, it's hard to focus on a particular project or do something and then get sidetracked because you go into another world. Okay, so the sixth one is to get a watch. And the most important reason to get a watch is because for most of the time, I feel that we, we look at our phone just to see what the time is. You need to know what the time is all the time. Then just look at your watch or you've got a clock in your room or you'll notice that clocks are around you. You know, this is kind of how we always used to see the time. Um, and every time, even if you just want to see your time, you might see a notification. You might go, oh, I'll just check my messages as well. You know, or I just remember I need to check this thing online. So it's just leading to all this sidetracks, you know? I think that's kind of, we just, we're using that as, as a watch. So I've, I found it's great. If you guys want to check this out, maybe you just even put your phone away for a while and then just keep using the watch and see, see if that makes a difference. Okay, so the seventh one is to sit with uncomfortable feelings. So a lot of the time, maybe we go through our phone is like, you know, if you're sat there, you just don't feel very good. You feel a bit angry, um, you feel a bit sad. So you get out, the, you know, you watch a YouTube video, you, you go on social media, you just start texting people you phone someone up, just look to, you know, keep that phone away and just sit with whatever you're feeling. You know, I did this for two or three nights in a row. And you know, this includes watching TV, your laptop, um, Netflix or whatever you're doing and just feel with what you're feeling, you know? And I started to become aware of, look, I'm actually quite bored in my life. You know, I'm actually 
maybe not happy where I am in my career, you know, in terms of where I live. You know, these, these like these sort of your relationships, you know, am I really going out? Am I having fun? Um, these sort of things you can realize on a deeper reflection with yourself rather than if you're just coming home and you're just checking your phone and you're in these all these habits because that's kind of escaping you. You know, I found, I realized the other day that, you know, these gadgets in a way can lead us distracted um, from actually doing something. You could be watching a YouTube channel. You could be watching my YouTube channels. You could be watching someone else constantly, but you're not really living your life. So a good tip is just literally to stay with the feelings, you know, the, the gadgets allow us to escape, you know, junk food, all these things that they're releasing chemicals, dopamine in your brain to allow you to feel good instantly. Whereas, you know, you want to get used to feeling happy and sad and just, just go in with that as a guide. Because when you feel down, when you feel drained, sad, angry, it's teaching you a great lesson. You know, sad could just be telling you about, look, you're a bit unhappy at the moment. Um, you know, the anger could be because someone's crossed your boundaries or upset you. So you want to be able to feel those feelings so you can then take decisive action. The final tip number eight. So I've got 10 altogether. So if you want to check out the extra two, do check on my blog post, which I've posted below. Uh, but this is uh, probably the most important thing is to do a dopamine detox, um, more specifically a screen detox. If you can go a whole day without checking your phone, you know, without a laptop and TV, a bonus. But, you know, look, look to do it just, just for your phone. Look, switch your phone off the whole day. Ideally, if you can go away somewhere, you know, in nature um, and just see how you feel without your phone, see what differences you notice. And when you cut things out for a day, for two days, whatever it is, or more so a whole day, and particularly a screen, your laptop or not watching TV, you then start to realize, you know, how good you can feel without it or it allows you to go deeper into yourself and, and become more productive. And just to realize how you feel, maybe you're watching it too much or too less, you know, because if you're just on your phone or you're on your laptop 12 hours a day, you don't know how that makes you feel if you live without it because you're into such a routine, you've become so dependent. But you might start to live a happier life without checking it. Maybe you only want to go on your laptop two or three hours a day or check your phone four or five times a day. You never know. You know, I want to leave you with that one, guys. And um, this is a really important challenge I found very important. Um, of course, there's loads of different things. There's junk food, there's watching um, loads of different TV shows, movies, you know, you could be watching pornography, could be drinking alcohol, gambling, all these different things which give you this feel good uh, dopamine effect, but you never know unless you test. So, you know, a big video here today on just checking your phone. Um, but I hope you found it useful, guys. Uh, do let me know how you get on. If you've got any other questions, do, do um, drop below. And also, if there's a particular area um, that you want to work on, just let me know. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and I will see you very soon. Bye.